In his autobiography, he pays tribute to the Mississippi. When I was a boy, there was but one permanent ambition among my comrades in our village on the west bank of the Mississippi River. That was to be a steamboatman. I first wanted to be a cabin boy. Later, I thought I would rather be the deckhand who stood on the end of the stage plank with a coil of rope in his hand. The pilot was the grandest position of all. You hear me? Now forward with it, forward. Or I make you swallow it, you split between a tired mud turtle and a crippled hearse horse. I wish that I could talk like that. By and by, I ran away and said I'd never come home again until I was a pilot and could come in glory. I took passage on an ancient tub for New Orleans. This gave me a chance to get acquainted with one of my pilots. He agreed to teach me the Mississippi River from New Orleans to St. Louis for $500. I entered on the small enterprise of learning 12 or 1300 miles of the great Mississippi River with the easy confidence of my time of life. I supposed that all a pilot had to do was to keep his boat in the river. And I did not consider that that could be much of a trick since it was so wide. Now, when I had mastered this water and had come to know every trifling feature that bordered the great river as well as I know the letters of the alphabet, I'd made a valuable acquisition. But I had lost something, too. All the grace, the beauty, the poetry had gone out of the majestic river. The sun means that we're going to have wind tomorrow. That floating log means that the river is rising. No, the romance and the beauty were all gone from the river. I still keep in mind a certain wonderful sunset which I witnessed when steamboating was new to me. I hoped that I would follow the river the rest of my days and die at the wheel when my mission was ended. But by and by the war came and commerce on the river ceased and my occupation was gone. After the Civil War, life on the Mississippi was never the same. Mark Twain lost his job as riverboat captain. He became a miner, a newspaperman, and finally, the best-known American writer of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. 